we're still traumatized. We, we're still injured. We haven't even stood up. But Johnny Asaf is calling on Beirut to stand up now. The massive explosions in the port of Lebanon's capital have exposed the government's failures along every line and left the people to pick up the pieces. Johnny's only one of many. Will they channel their fury into protest? Welcome to Beirut Living. It's Johnny Asaf's first day back at work since the explosion. We once had the most beautiful view. And we still have a beautiful view with a different perspective. I was here when this happened. You can see all, all the blood, all my blood is still there on the floor. But if I was in my own office, I would be gone. So I'm walking on, on my own blood. In Beirut social circles, Johnny is considered a man about town. He founded a company called Beirut Living, which buys, rents, and sells real estate. But the disaster turned him into an activist, out of sheer fury over the political stagnation in the country. Now, five days after the explosions, he and his employees have to clean up and salvage whatever they can. We're asking to have stability. And instead, we are met with big bangs. The government is not only a government here, they're a mafia. Uh, you have to face the mafia and the government at the same time. And the army. And the uh, uh, police. Uh, no, yeah. <coughs> they have, we pay taxes to fund our suffering. The powerful explosions in Beirut's port brutally exposed the many troubles plaguing the country, mismanagement, corruption, and an overall failure of the political establishment. Inflation and economic crisis have pushed Lebanon to the brink of ruin. Discontent had been brewing for months, and then suddenly, wide-scale destruction. Some 300,000 people have lost their homes. And who will clean it all up? The citizens themselves. Were it not for the sense of solidarity they share, their situation would be much more difficult. Civilian relief organizations came from every corner of Lebanon to join the international ones on site. Johnny Asaf has been working in emergency mode for days, both giving and receiving help. Getting a chicken sandwich after four days, it's even five days, I don't know, I can't, I'm not counting the days, feels, feels great. It's all done by human incentive. People are taking their own money to help. Those who are hurt, those who doesn't have a house, they're trying in each area you would find a small community that is doing incentives that again, the government has failed to do for its own people. Over one million Syrian refugees have stretched Lebanon's resources even more. Karantina, a poor neighborhood east of the port, is where 12-year-old Mustafa lives. What, uh, the explosion caused an enormous shockwave. Everything in the house was destroyed. The door flew off its hinges, as you can see. We had to crawl over the door on our hands and knees. Yeah, on our hands and knees. Mustafa's family came here from Syria before Lebanon's own civil war. The children were all born in Beirut. They had always felt safe here, until now. But at least they all survived. Oh, what a feeling it was. We were so scared. We thought we were dreaming. I kept wondering when I would wake up from this nightmare. I can still hear the sound of glass shattering in my head. I don't know why that keeps happening. 
انا كل ما اتذكره ام شيكينج ما اعرف شو اسوي مرجو Do you need fruit? Nothing? Yeah. All the best. Bye. It's good to see you're safe. How are you doing? Johnny Asaf is keeping many lines of communication going. He connects volunteers and victims over WhatsApp and Facebook, posting what's needed and where. Here he's come to see if windows and walls have been repaired. You doing okay? Have my guys come by? Not even for the windows? Johnny is told that a wall has collapsed. He says he will see what he can do about it. Even before the explosions, this house in Carantina was a virtual ruin. The Maed family have lived here less than a year. They also come from Syria. When the warehouse blew up, they thought it was a bomb attack. The explosion blew out this side. It shook the whole house. We ran outside to see the plane. My brothers and I looked for bombers up in the sky. And then there was a second explosion and it destroyed everything. If we had stayed inside, we'd be dead now. Even now, days later, stone blocks are still falling out of the walls. We've cleared away the rubble. Forty-five minutes ago, a truck drove by, and boom. Their neighbors are also anxious. My house is standing but could fall down any moment. Please leave yours, or do you want to die? Nobody here wants to die. Please give us another home. They've offered you another home. Please go to it. Where is it? They wrote down our number, but nobody called. So tell us, where is that house? Please, take your family out of here. Where are you going to sleep? Here? Is there no humanity left? I live here. Six people died here. You want to stay? Then go ahead and die. Everywhere, nerves are frayed and rage is boiling over. After five days, they put the army and everyone hates the army these days. Dissatisfaction had already begun fueling protests in the autumn, but they were stopped by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, though, anger outweighs fear of the virus. We're all Lebanese. Why are we fighting each other? We're Lebanese. Shame on you for fighting each other. How could you do this to your own citizens who've suffered so much pain? The people feel broken and exhausted and you fire tear gas at them. Shame on you. Is this really what you want to do? Is this how you protect your people? That's not how it should be. Every evening, a veil of tear gas hangs over the center of Beirut. Lebanon's various religious groups divided the power among themselves to give everyone a say and guarantee the peace. But now it only seems to ensure mismanagement and corruption. Many hope that after the recent disaster, things will be different. But for now, the only response is more soldiers and more tear gas. My government did this. At the demonstrations, Johnny stands on the sidelines. The wounds on his back aren't fully healed yet. He wants to go home. I'm divided into many places. I need to help my team. I need to help my country. I need to be active as an activist. I need to help. It's like, it's, it's going banana, but I love it. I love it. It's maybe taking me out of my trauma as well. It's making me have a purpose. During sleepless nights since the explosion, he's been busy posting things on the internet. 
Tonight, he's taking aim at the military. In the past, he would have spent this time socializing or brooding over his business. The next morning, a colleague pays him a visit. He took yeah. pictures of Johnny just after the explosion. I recall putting this here because there's the, I, I could feel here. This is, here there were the most, the two biggest uh, cuts and the glass was still there. Lucky to be alive. A moment of joy. One moment of joy. Our prime minister is resigning now. It's a, it's a moment. It's like, it's a great moment. Like, go home. You failed us. But that evening, once again, the protests turn into confrontation. The demonstrators don't believe that the system will change on its own. The frustration that is keep on, that is continuing, as well, it's the adrenaline that is still there, as well the, the smell of the tear gas. As you can see, I'm, I'm crying. The smell of the tear gas. The smell of the tear gas which as well, once you're tear gassed, you wanna go back and fight again. It's like, you're angry. You need to take your anger out. Does it get anywhere at this time? No, and it might hurt people. You can see the, they're throwing extra tear gas on people and these might hurt them. But the, the anger is still new, so you can do much about it. But he does what he can and intends to keep doing it till something changes.